I think a lot of it came from working with my dad and really sort of like learning from his approach to comedy. I think growing up with, you know, uh, I mean, he was sort of co-writing all of the Christopher Guest movies that I had really admired and that is my favorite kind of humor. Like really real grounded comedy that comes out of character and circumstance where the joke is not at someone's expense but rather, you know, the, the, sh the sheer s absurdity of the circumstance. As someone now that is in a position where I'm casting, mm -hmm. I cast, I sat in the audition room for every single one of our auditions for every cast member. Mm -hmm. And it, were, it was the people that showed up who didn't have anything to prove that were the most compelling to watch. Mm -hmm. it, was the, it was the actors who read the character and saw something more in the character than what was just written on the page. As hard as it is to do, going into an audition without expectations, but rather saying like, this is all, I'm gonna use this opportunity as a way for me to look at a script, break down a character, and really personalize that experience and take a chance and take a risk and use it as yet another building block in the process of honing my own skills. That's a way of recontextualizing the process that I think is a little bit less daunting. I remember someone telling me when I went out to Los Angeles for my first pilot season to not expect any work and that it's a three-year process. Mm -hmm. The first year, if you're lucky, you get in the room. The second year, you should expect a callback if you're doing some things right. And the third year is when you should start seeing response like tests and, mm -hmm. um, and bookings. That's sort of obviously generalizing the whole process, but I think so much of us, so many of us go into every audition thinking like, this has to be it. And a lot of times too, you know, we're waiting tables. We're taking jobs we don't wanna take to, s to subsidize a career choice that is not a given. Mm -hmm. And so there is a level of urgency in terms of the kind of, you know, we need a job, mm -hmm. but also the, the vicious cycle of that is that you're walking in with an energy that's like, I need the job and people can feel it. Mm -hmm. Follow through. I think that pertains to any sort of creative craft. Mm -hmm. If you don't follow through with something, you will have nothing, you will ha physically have nothing. Mm -hmm. If you don't follow through with the script idea that you have, even if you hate what you've written, at least at the end of it, you have a script. So many people don't have follow through that if you can get something done, either write something or if you can, you know, uh, continue to audition and never give up, I mean, it's the follow through that will ultimately put you ahead. It'll put you out in front mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't have follow through. And to be able to have something, whether it's audition experience, a pilot, a movie script, to be able to have something is invaluable. <music> Working alongside Catherine O'Hara and my dad two people who have managed to navigate this industry in the most graceful ways. Um, I think first and foremost, they, it has been a master class in comedy, in um, thoughtful comedy, in character work, in um, knowing that you have to have a safe space when you walk on set mm -hmm. uh, to, to have the ability to try things. There's such a sense of uh, collaboration on our show that I don't think exists across the board mm -hmm. but a lot of that again has to do with not just their um, being very good at what they do as actors but also their humility when it comes to how they work on set because I think half the battle for actors mm -hmm. is how do you create a space for yourself on a set that feels safe and allows you to be free in your expression as an actor. And I think their lack of ego 
when they show up at work and they step on set, there is not an ego to be found. Mm -hmm. And when that's coming from the number one and number two, like on your show, you can't help but feel that ripple effect through your entire production. Mm -hmm. And I know for me as an actor, like, you know, the first season of this show, when I stepped foot on that set, I was terrified. Annie and I both, our first scenes were with my dad and Catherine, and um, it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But part of what has made us good actors, or not good actors, but like comfortable actors, rather, has been um, knowing that we're not walking onto a set where we're scared of making a false move, mm -hmm. where you know if we take a risk, it's going to be met with someone yelling at us, or um, you know, yeah, it's being able to watch them conduct themselves with such uh, a respectful air of like excitement for the craft still mm -hmm. and also a an appreciation for the fact that you know you are an actor on a show but in order for you to look good on that show there is also a team of people around you mm -hmm. be it production designers costume designers make hair and makeup that go into you being good um, it's just been great I mean it, it it's really been it's a very rare experience I know that it's a rare experience because I've I've had friends that have worked on sets where people are screaming and you can't look mm -hmm. people in the eye and I've always been really uh, disheartened by the fact that there are some actors who somehow feel like their success has given them uh, some kind of free reign to feel superior to the other people they're working with. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day we are all coming to a set as equals and it has to be that way in order for everybody to do their jobs properly. Right.